And here it is. Hi, everyone. Dom Femulo here. I, this is so great. Mondays at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I get the chance for Mapex All Access to have a variety of people that are here. And today I have got the absolute hard-hitting. Please welcome Brittany Bowman. Thank you so much, Brittany, for joining me. Thank you for having me. This is great. Now, I know you're out in sunny Southern California. I am in New York. I've got two and a half feet of snow here. And you've got like beautiful weather out there, right? It's sunny, been sunny. It's supposed to be sunny all week. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. I want yeah. to go back, Brittany. You know, I've seen some of the vintage, the footage that you have had on YouTube and, and uh, on the internet. You've got some, you're just such a great player at what you're doing. Just tell me about when you were younger. You grew up in Chicago, right? I did. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the early days of what got you involved in drumming. So it's kind of funny that I actually started playing guitar before I was playing drums. Um, I, I'm not really sure why. I loved both of them. I think it was just easier to get me, I guess my parents probably just easier to get a guitar instead of a whole drum kit and then I'm, I'm loud. So I ended up playing guitar first, but I've always had this like inkling and a natural draw towards like rhythm and drums. And so I ended up after playing guitar for about six months, was like begging my parents for a drum kit for a long time and they made sure, you know, I really wanted it before they got me one. And then, um, yeah, they finally got me a kit and I was, I think I was 10 when I got my first drum kit. And so, yeah, I, I've just been doing it ever since and I love it so much. So you got this drum kit, you start wailing away, you're having fun on it. Were there any bands that you were listening to that were that were inspiring you? Yeah, a hundred percent. So Green Day was like my my band. Like that was I just loved them. They were like my favorite. Um, so they definitely I remember like there was a Grammy nominees compilation CD, which had like, of course, every genre of music on there. And so I was like probably 10, yeah, 10 at the time when it came out, and American Idiot was on there and I showed my mom and of course there was like swearing in it and she was like, what are you listening to? Like, you can't be listening to this. But I heard that and I was just like, this music is amazing. Cause you know, I was 10 and I hadn't been listening to anything like rock or whatever. So they definitely got me into this style of music that I, I really love. Um, but I, you know, I remember my mom would play the Beatles all the time around the house. So they're of course, one of my favorite bands ever. So yeah, but Green Day was kind of what prompted everything for me. Well, it's kind of interesting. So you, you, you're, are you playing along to records at that time? Yeah. So I would literally just put in, I didn't have lessons really for a while. So I would just put in, you know, my headphones and play along to my iPod and just play along to music and, and kind of teach myself and, and do it that way for, for quite a while. So were there like, you know, so you have these bands, the Beatles, you're playing along to these songs, you're having some fun. Were there any, were you honing in on drummers per se? You know what's funny is I didn't for a long time. I, I, I obviously paid attention to the drums, but it wasn't like I was listening to a band because of the drummer. It was more like, it was more of a, of a whole song thing. And I would just, I would put the music on. And it wasn't until I got quite a bit older that I really paid attention to drummers in particular. Cause I guess when you're 10, I mean, maybe some people, but I was just into, I don't know, I was so young and I was just into so many different bands and artists, but yeah. So it took me a minute to like really start honing in on different drummers. <laughs> so, so you're starting to hear these drummers play. So it, could you name me five drummers that influenced you? They could be alive or dead. Can it, what 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 drummers would would you consider that were and are still influential in, in your playing? So definitely Trey Cool, just because like that band got me started on everything, and I would play to them all the time. And I kind of grew up in that Warp Tour phase where it was a lot of like pop punk bands and everything, which is funny because when it comes to like actual influential influential drummers in the grand scheme of things, there are so many amazing drummers out there. But I started with like these smaller like pop punk bands so like i said i mean green day's not small but there would be so many little warp tour bands there's a band called bayside that i absolutely loved um but as far as like bigger drummers jeff Picaro, absolutely love john bonham absolutely love ringo Starr, absolutely love for multiple reasons um gosh i mean so many even josh freeze i love his drumming yeah. um 
So there's, yeah, there's so many. So there's, so many. There's, there's five right there. So let's talk about, about someone like Jeff Beccaro. What, what was it about Jeff's playing that just locked you in? Well, everything, I mean, all the obvious things, you know, as far as like dynamics and just groove and feel, because at, playing pop punk stuff, I don't want to say all pop punk drummers aren't dynamic because they are, but everything's kind of like big and heavy and like just go, go, go. And, and so hearing a drummer like him, it, it kind of opened my ears up to like a whole different style of playing of, you know, having great dynamics and, and good technique mixed with, you know, it was just something I hadn't really ever delved into before. And so that was like, you know, and of course, now that I'm older, it's like, that's the kind of thing that makes you such a great drummer is, is, you know, all the little things that maybe people overthink, like, you know, really quiet ghost notes and all that stuff. Because when you're a kid, you just want to hit the drums, you know, so. Absolutely. And, and, and the analyzation of all the different drummers, that kind of comes later on as you get, you know, much more serious into it. Jeff uh, Procaro, I had met in 1976. He became a wonderful friend of mine. And uh, he was just a great player to see. And, uh, and he had all that. He had just an incredible pocket. He was a great musician. He had an incredible understanding of technique because his dynamics were incredible and how he played. Yeah. And he was just such a great musician. He just knew what part to play in that tune at that time. It was just so great to experience. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, so now now where I'm at as a drummer, it's like I'm, I'm trying to hone in on all those little things because those are really what make you a great drummer. I think if you can sit down and, and have good feel, of course, as a drummer, that's kind of the most important part. But growing up playing pop punk, it was definitely not on my mind. So so I'm really trying to delve into just getting really good at all that stuff. And someone like like Bonzo, John Bonham, Zeppelin. I mean, my gosh, he he was a, a you know Jeff was heavily influenced by Bonzo, so it was an incredible you know lineage of of influence there. True, that's so true. Yeah, it's interesting too where you can take your influences from, even though your music might not necessarily be in the same exact you know realm or your playing style is different, but you can still get influences from all over. And what is it about 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 Bonham? You know, this guy. How do you figure that Bonham is influencing so many people from his grave? You know, even Jeff themselves. What these guys did. What was it about Bonham that just kind of stuck out for you? I think also sort of just the energy. I think because he had, you know, of course, just insane pocket and technique and just a great, you know, overall player. But he his personality just shone through every time he drummed too, which I think was, you know, I mean, he was such a big part of. The music of that band and so i i just think personality wise like you know his recordings you can hear him like young while he's playing and he's just so into it and i think that's that's really cool too because it's like you know doing it for all the right reasons and yeah just his energy and you know his kit sound too was so you know very unique to him how incredible when you think about just the fact that that his great great players were highly influential but you know it goes back you know you mentioned ringo here I mean, you know, all these players go back to Ringo and just the, the fact that Ringo was able to come up with parts, you know, you know, they were like compositional parts for tunes that his drum parts just fit in so well. Pretty amazing how these great players played. Yeah, and that's the thing about Ringo too, is he's not like, you know, people always argue like Ringo isn't like whatever, that amazing drummer, blah, blah, blah. But it's like he really was because Beatles songs, like it's, if you sit down and play some of the stuff he played, it's so perfect for the songs that, you know, all the parts and even some of the fills were so simple, but like perfect, you know, perfectly written for those songs. And yeah, so I, I you know, that's another thing as a drummer, musician in general, it's like, I don't think there's ever, you know, there are levels of, of, of course, skill, but I think it, when you're playing the music that you want to play in the band that you play in, it's like, there's almost no one that can duplicate exactly what you're doing. So I think it's kind of cool too, that you can, you know, be at all different levels of playing and, and you know, it, it just works for your band. So that's kind of cool. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty powerful. So here you are now, you're playing along with these records, you're, you're, you're at that point. And then, and then like, you know, at 21, you decide to make the move to LA. I mean, you, you, you know, just what, 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 mm -hmm. what sparked that? I think I love Chicago and I still love Chicago. I haven't been back in forever, but I do love Chicago, but I, a, I music was such a big, 
part of my life and I always wanted to be in LA just because that's where you go for, for being a musician. And I always told myself, like, if I didn't, if I never did it, I would always regret not, not trying it. And so I figured even if it doesn't work out for music, like I absolutely love the weather. So I'm in, I'm where I want to be living anyways. So I actually moved up North to Santa Cruz area for about three years. I moved in with some family just to kind of bridge the gap between you know, being able to save up a little bit of money. And then I came out here to LA and just kind of didn't have any idea what I was doing, but just, <laughs> just kind of moved here and then, you know, just met some good people and started doing little jams around town. And that's, yeah. And, and then, you know, so I've only been in Los Angeles for about four years now, but one of those years was, you know, last year, which is kind of toast now due to COVID. So I, I, Still feel like I'm getting the hang of LA, but you know, now with this year being how it is and last year, it's a little bit of an adjustment, but. Boy, it, it really has been. So so let's talk about the pandemic. The pandemic's happening. You're kind of, we're kind of trapped to a certain degree in our, in our homes and what they are. Are you, are you doing anything in that time? Are you, are you listening to other music? Are you working on your craft? Are you reading books? What, what are you doing to fill this time? I do love reading, actually. I love reading, um, but I've I've actually been so I was playing, like I said, I was playing out at a lot of jams around town and going out to different shows and trying to network. And now that that's not happening anymore, I was actually I was featured in a Fiverr video um, or in a YouTube video all about like different people on Fiverr doing sessions and stuff. And so right around that time, I was featured in that video and all of a sudden everything, the world kind of shut down and I was doing way more in my studio. And so they kind of worked out right when the world shut down, I was spending a lot more time by myself in my studio doing different sessions for people and everything. So that, that actually worked out really well. So I've been doing a lot of that and then just practicing a ton and kind of using the time, you know, as since I'm not going out and doing things, just really staying in my studio and at least getting like two hours a day and of just practicing and trying to, you know, get myself to improve. So by the time, you know, this all lifts and stuff, hopefully I'll be at a different, you know, space to be able to do more things with people live and everything. So absolutely good. Good for you. Did you, in, in your formative years, did you take lessons, any drum lessons with teachers at all? Yeah, I, I took lessons and, and I don't want to bash the person that gave me drum lessons growing up, but it was not, I will just say it was not anything technical. So I'm kind of now after been playing for like, you know, 15, 16 years now, I'm at the point where I'm trying to correct some certain techniques that I grew up doing. And, you know, because when you're, when you're 10, 11, 12, taking lessons, it was more so he was teaching me like what song do you want to learn this week and we would just put on the song and like jam to it it wasn't any like nothing nothing that now i'm going like wait like if i would have learned all of this before i would have been at such a such a different place than i am now but i'm not you know complaining because i think how i did learn helped me in different areas where you know maybe you know everything happens for a reason and i think i'm where i'm at now for a reason but yeah, it was interesting too because I wish I had more of a technical teacher. But I was living in the suburbs of Illinois, like in the middle of nowhere, and it just wasn't music. wasn't really like a lot, like no live music because I, I actually wasn't living near Chicago. I was about like an hour and a half outside the city, so there was just not a lot of. I'm surprised I I got into music because there's just there was nothing happening musically over there. So. So yeah, it was interesting. And I, he was actually the only person I've really taken lessons from. I haven't really officially like consistently taken lessons from anybody since then, which I want to, I'm so open to, because I think it's always, you know, it's always such a good idea to just improve and keep growing from different people. So. Well, and, and that's a great point. I mean, and that's tremendously, uh, you know, having an open mind is a tremendous, you know, quality that, that you have you know listen studying is, is i mean i still study i still try and get in new ideas i still take in new things i've got you know many students that i teach that are still trying to learn and during this pandemic they're pushing themselves to see if and it's not just about just learning the technique but they want to go back and learn some more fundamentals and you know, fine tune some of the challenges that they're feeling so it's always a part of the process it's an ongoing lifelong journey Brittany, it is. yeah this that's, is how it is yeah for sure yeah so i've been you know, spending about an hour a day just doing different, you know, to a metronome hand exercises, 
and just different things like that to just kind of get, you know, because before too, that's another great thing about having a teacher at any point is kind of having a structure and like, I, I like having someone go, you know, okay, someone that's, you know, at a higher level than me being like, if you want to get here, these are the things that you have to practice to get to this level. Because if you, if you don't have a little bit of guidance, you can kind of just go in and sit behind your kit and there's a million things you could be going over. So having a little bit of guidance is super helpful, I think. Absolutely. So, 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 so what I love about it is that you, listen, you play great. And, you. You know, and if you, if you really, and, and if you, the, so how you learned and what you, you naturally and, and got just from your, your gut and your instinct is phenomenal. Phenomenal. You learn things that, you, you know, whether you were taught or not, you got it. So. <laughs> Thanks. I, I love drumming. Yeah. So it's, it's my favorite and I'm, I'm so happy to, you know, be able to, even through all the COVID stuff, you know, have a place that I can come practice all the time. Oh, good for you. Good for you. So, so like a book, like stick control, do you have, have you ever, you know, I do. Yep. I, I have that book. So I mean, there's a book, just that book alone is something which, you know, all of these, uh, these, you know, great legendary drummers still go through that book and right. they do it different ways with different hand positions, with different speed, different accents. And it's, it's kind of interesting to see how, how many of these books can just, you know, stay with us and, and work us, you know, for as long as we want. Yeah. And that's also kind of tying back to what I said about why it's good to have some guidance because a book like that, you could just go off on one page and turn the, you know, just the hand exercises in your snare into grooves around the whole kit. And, you know, there's so many, it's just limitless, like the things you could be practicing. So there's, you know, so I think that's also why I'm kind of always making sure I'm here every day, just doing something because there's so much to always be learning. Well, good for you. You know, it's funny you know, with the book Stick Control. When I was younger, I went through the book with my feet also, and that's really kind yeah. of I built my double bass chop. So the, some of these books, there's a there, there's an endless way that you can go through them. That exactly, yeah, and and double, yeah, the whole. The, it's crazy how double kick is like a whole other beast. Like it's almost like it's a separate, like you, you know, it's like. It's a whole other thing. It's not like you can just sit down and, and have that perfectly. You really have to like train your opposite foot. So it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really, really is. So, you know, we were talking before about, about being a female in a business that was predominantly male dominated. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 there must be some challenges that you have faced in being a female where you come out. How has that been in, in stepping into a world where there might be all men in the band and you come in to play drums? What was that like? interesting and not not even so much i think it's 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 almost it, it can be a blessing or a curse i was talking to a female bass player friend that i know named leanne and we were talking about it a little bit too and it's it's almost it's it's frustrating because there's not i, I don't want to say there's not many female drummers but every person that I would say like, oh, I'm a musician. They just go, oh, you're a singer or you're, you know, or, you know, and it's like, no, like I, I play drums. And, and then it's like, oh, that's so cool. And it's like, and it's, it, but so I, and I'm, I'm aware that there's not as many female drummers. So it is a more unique thing, but I think it's more frustrating sometimes for female musicians just to be, you know, to want to not feel like it's some crazy thing like just where it's just almost normal you know it's like oh yeah you play you know not it's not amazing because you're a female that drums it's just you drum you know and so having that too sometimes and it can be growing up it was also interesting because you know it's like you you wonder if people either want you in the band because you're a female not necessarily because of your skill level like maybe it would be a benefit to their band or maybe it would be a yeah. a weak point like they didn't want a girl in the band so it, it's like got a whole nother l layer of like things to think about sort of in a way and you know i it's definitely not so much a thing i don't think anymore which is amazing but it's definitely there's like another layer of things that you you kind of subconsciously even maybe think about so it is interesting but i'm so happy that a company like mapex you know is really inclusive of like you know, making sure that they're including a bunch of great female drummers and, and building their roster. And because, you know, it's, it's, I, it's, there needs to be more up and coming, like younger female drummers and everything. And, and yeah, I, so I think it's really cool to have the platform to be able to like reach different females because I know, like I used to work at guitar center and there were a lot of girls that would come in and not, and literally I had a couple girls, they were like, probably like 
around my age when I started like 10 thinking like they couldn't play drums because it was like a male instrument and I, I was like what and like but people think like like kids think that because when it's such a dominated thing and you're just taking in all this in internet information and all you see is a bunch of guys playing you know so I think it's you know I don't know I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say but it's important for like the new generation coming up too to know that you know girls and guys can can do all the same stuff so well, absolutely and there's a wonderful organization called hit like a girl which right. is on a, a contest each year and uh, globally. And uh, Dave Levine, who organizes that, really has kind of given some great opportunities to uh, to women to be able to play and of all ages. So, I mean, it, it's great to see. And uh, I mentioned uh, Tammy Woods has this incredible Facebook page. I think it's right. Female Drummers Unite. And that is incredible to have that. She's got like 6,000 plus females on that Facebook group. That's so great. So it's really starting to grow. What's happening with it? I got a, a question there from Carlos Goodspin. Let's, let's bring a question up here. If you, if you can see this here, cool. Brittany. Uh, Carlos Goodspin, who's a phenomenal drummer and uh, and drum tech down in the Miami area. He's a great, great dear friend of mine, and uh, and he works uh, with all these top well-known drummers. He says, Brittany, can you offer any real-world advice to the female drummers on our chat on what it's really like to be on tour or or to play and watch out for what they are doing, you know, at festivals or just when you're out playing with different bands, even locally. What what, what can you say to to females to, to give them, you know, some some guidance and some advice? I think I mean I guess this could kind of apply to females and males, but but you know, coming from his perspective of being a female drummer, I think just you know always doing it from your heart. Don't let don't don't think like oh I'm I'm I don't know, and I never really do this, but thinking about the question, just don't come at it from the perspective of I am a female drummer like am I out of place here with a bunch of guys on stage you know this or like you know if it's a festival and a lot of the people are guys like I you know and then I'm a female up here whatever just always like whenever I play and it's just so natural you know just do it from your heart and like you know and hit hard like I it, if the song calls for it because that's something you know I, I see not a lot but there's you know drummers too that are females that don't you know, hit like, like hit like the hit like a girl thing. It's like so true. It's like you know, sometimes girls are a little timid behind the kit, and it's like you know, just hit the drums hard if if the song calls for it. Of course, so just yeah, just passion, just doing everything from passion. But that can apply to guys too. So, well, it, it's a great point. I mean, so I guess you know, the, the, the Carlos, thank you so much. I guess the point is really is the fact that it's a uh, listen, just go out there and just give it your all. Totally, always. Always. Just, just give it your all, you know? I mean, do you find yourself, you know, w when you're playing, you know, again, do you find yourself tiring out at all? Do you, how do you keep yourself in shape to, to, uh, I, I'm a huge like fitness nerd in general. So I'm always, I really miss the gym because the gyms have been all closed. So I would weight lift a lot and run. But now that all the gyms are closed, I've just been outside running and I keep I keep in shape, which is interesting because you wouldn't I mean, I guess you would figure that drums are such a physical instrument. So it is really important to keep up health and fitness and especially like doing tours, even for guitar players like, you know, my friend Nita Strauss, who plays also in Glens, you know, with Alice Cooper. She's such a fitness nerd, too, and she's always running around the stage and, you know, it's like it is it's like touring and playing music is a very physical thing. So I think making sure you're always keeping up on just health, being healthy and living a healthy lifestyle makes a difference. So Boy, that's good for you. You know, I, I, I know Nita Strauss and uh, she's a, a wonderful guitar player. And uh, yeah, she's great. I, I've been on a couple of panels with her and I've also interviewed her. And oh, cool. and again, she's she's someone that again talks about being the, the most fit you can be to get out there and maintain a high physical you know workout program. Totally, because if you think about it, when you're up there on stage for, you know, I keep using, like, I guess I'm using the Alice Cooper band as an example, but they're, you know, just that style of music is so hard hitting and it's just, you know, Alice doesn't really ever leave character during the show and there's not very many breaks. So I know like someone like Glenn, it's like always just like, especially that kind of music and it's so physical and you're not stopping. And if you're not in shape and you're not keeping up with your actual outside of the kit physical health it's it's really hard to to do a two-hour show without stopping you know so so definitely yeah keeping up with it and i think also just coming in here and practicing every day as if you were playing a show and not just you know being relaxed but you know putting on some music and just keeping up the physical parts and i was actually someone was telling me the other day that i think 
Travis Barker was doing an interview with Joe Rogan or something where he was actually saying that he would go to the gym and he does a whole workout based on how he hits and he works those muscles in particular, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it makes sense if you, if you build the muscles that you're using the most when you're drumming, it's going to, it's going to help you stay stronger. So yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. We've got several people that have joined us on here. We've got people from Brazil, Gustavo, Bergonchi is from Brazil. We've got uh, who just joined us here. Check this out, uh, Rashid yeah. Williams. He is the he is the reason. He is he is a the reason I play my packs. He hit me up and and started this whole this whole relationship. So I'm I'm so grateful to him. Oh, sure. Rashid is such a phenomenal player. I've had the chance to interview him a couple of times. Such a great great player. I want everyone to go out and check out Rashid. He's just such a phenomenal. He's, yeah, he's player. he's bad. And he calls it. Olympic drumming is what yeah. <laughs> that's what I tell my students when they come to me. I tell them, I said, listen, I'm going to, I, I, I teach Olympic drumming. I mean, if you want to play in today's world, you've got to be physical fit, you know, in, in physically fit in shape to understand the demands that we have on this instrument. It's so interesting. And yeah. And, and, you know, and, and also maybe it's because of the tattoos and it's also probably because a lot of the videos that I post are like metal and heavy music. And I don't know why I always do those. I think cause the drum parts are really cool. So it's always fun to upload that, that style of music. So, but disclaimer, like I do play, I do love all different styles of music, but definitely like when you're playing double kick and metal and it's like, it's so, I mean, I'll be, you know, doing a cover, and by the time I'm just done filming the cover, you're like exhausted. So it's it's definitely like a, a physical, yeah, physical instrument. <laughs> well, we've got people here. Check this out. We've got people, Mario from Peru. Sweet Peru. Right. I love this here, right? Rashid says it's so great to have Brit in the family. So grateful. Absolutely fantastic. So a couple of things now. So when you're when you're in your studio, this is your own separate studio that, that you you have a, a separate building that you rent out that you have your drums in there, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, I'd I'd love to eventually, you know, if I when I get a house, I'll definitely build out a little spot for my kit. But for now, yeah, just because apartment living does not allow for loud drums. But yeah. So you you rent a place, you set it up, you've got a great background the way it is, you've got some lights in there, you got the drums. So when you go in there to practice. What would you work on? Like, like, what would be an average practice day for you? So lately, a good friend of mine has given me a couple great hand exercises. So I've been doing that for like, you know, the last couple of weeks. So 45 minutes doing everything from like six stroke rolls, always to a metronome, of course, and really practicing dynamics like, you know, paradiddles, just all the basic stuff to really just because I like I said, growing up, I never really sat and actually practiced those things. I would just sit behind the kit and put on some music and play to it, which I think helped me in a lot of ways too, um, as a drummer playing and growing up that way. But now I, I definitely take about an hour on just hand exercises and then another hour on stuff like, you know, the Rosanna shuffle and just those type of things to get dynamics and, you know, pocket and everything. So kind of an hour of each, an hour of hand stuff and then an hour of, of kit. And then just, you know, if I am not, you know, if I have the time just putting on music again and, and having fun. And just jamming. How great is that? So, so so you'll do this. So you'll work on – so when you work on, like, some of these patterns, or you want to practice pad, or you're on your snare drum, or you want the kit, how, how, how are you working that? So, yeah, sometimes I'll do it at home, um, and I'll just have, you know, like a snare stand with a practice pad on it. But typically when I come here, yeah, I just, I just sit behind my kit and just do it on the snare drum, and I'll put in my headphones and just do it to a metronome for five minutes each. And I think there's, like, I do – like 10 exercises. So it equates to about an hour, yeah. you know? And so, yeah. And I, I'm, it, it feels good. Like I always like knowing I'm progressing as a drummer and working on things that are actually getting me to the next level. So I've been super happy to be doing those exercises every day. It, it's helpful. Fantastic. Do you have any ear protection that you use when, when, when you're in there? I have cans that I, I sometimes I'll wear and then otherwise I have, I don't have actually, I don't even have custom in-ears yet, but I've got just a generic, you know, sure in-ears that I'll throw those in and plug them into my computer so I can hear the click. Yeah. So. Yeah. How fantastic. Tell me about the drums that you have back there. That's a, a beautiful look, looking set. Which one is that? That's the Saturn V, I think. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's the Mapex Saturn kit. And I it's funny about this one too, because I I was kind of mentioning earlier, I all my kits have been 
Well, actually, what's funny, the first kit I ever got was a red to black fade. And and I love everything like black on black. And so I ended up spray painting it like an idiot when I was like 15 or something. And I spray painted it black. And then the kit I got after that was all black. And so I was actually talking to, you know, Rashid a little bit about it too and going back and forth about what kit, because they have a black one. And I was like, I'm just going to get the black kit. And I'm like, that's so stupid. Like I need to get some color. And everyone was like, the red looks really cool. And I'm so happy I got it because it's just everything. The backdrop's always black and I'm always wearing, you know, not today, but I'm always wearing black. And so the red is just, it's such a beautiful kit too. Like, you know, I just, I'm so, so happy that I got the red one. Yeah. It really is. The set of five and, and how they, you know, manufacture these drums and just the quality of the shells. And uh, it, it's just, it's just a, a great sound. But the hardware too, the hardware really is fantastic on how easy it is to adjust things and put them where you want them. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's just, it's so, it's so beautiful. And, and I, you know, it, I had a Mapex snare for the longest time and it was my favorite snare. It still is my favorite snare. And, you know, I, I always wanted to have a full Mapex kit. And so that's why it was so crazy when Rashid hit me up because, you know, I was so interested in Mapex for the longest time based on just like, all the drums that I've played by them. And so I'm just I'm super happy to be a part of the family because, you know, not just from a drumming perspective, but like, you know, Rashid and, and and just everyone over at Mapex are just so sweet. Like the people are just so great. So. Oh, they, they, they really are. You know, Mark Bennett and these people are just fantastic. You know, yeah, Mark's amazing. Jeff Mulvihill. These are, you know, Rick DeYoung. These are people that are just dedicated musicians that they, they know how to make things happen for us and they understand the needs of what musicians are requiring. Yep, it's so true. And it's it's really nice too to have, you know, companies that support you and, and back you, you know, and it, it's so important, you know, because, uh, and, and, you know, also making sure you're giving them the same amount of support back, I think is so important as well, because especially when it's companies that you really love and believe in, you know, it's like you want other people to, to, try their products too because they're they're genuinely really great drums and, and so yeah i love them <laughs> mapex what a great what a great product and and so many great people and again the fact that rashid you know kind of got you involved thank you rashid man you're doing it man and he's still he's still you know expanding the mapex family is fantastic yeah it's awesome it's so fun Let's talk about your your social media and 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 your YouTube and your Instagram stuff. And you know you put content together to put to put uh, you know different covers up. How do you go about all that? How do how do you maintain that? So <clears throat> during COVID, of course, now there's more time to be doing it. But it, you know, it's definitely it takes a lot to to do a cover and put the whole thing together and and be consistent with it. But I think consistency is how you you know you're going to grow a following and you're going to reach more people. So I try and at least put two up a week, three up a week, every other day if I can, but you know, just making sure that I'm, and it's funny too, cause I'll, I'll always be having my Spotify playlist on or when I'm running, I'll have, you know, my Spotify show me songs that, you know, maybe I haven't heard before. And so I'm always coming up with new little ideas while I'm running about things that I want to be covering. But I'm also trying to branch out a little bit into doing less covers and more, you know, maybe just writing my own stuff, but because a lot of the times I'll put up a cover that I spent, you know, quite a bit of time on, and then it's always the copyright thing, and then the video gets muted. So it's kind of like you got to be careful with covers and stuff, but they're fun. It's just fun to put up stuff that other people, you know, have heard the song before, and I, I don't know. I've always loved it. So you'll do. So you'll do a post like every other day. You'll 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 post on both. Is it Facebook and Instagram and your YouTube channel? Instagram is, I, you know, I started with YouTube. That's what kind of where I wanted to build my channel. And it's really hard on YouTube to, to get like a, it's hard. I don't know why Instagram for me has always been easier to like to build momentum on. So I mostly post on Instagram and then occasionally all Instagram's usually, you know, only a minute long. So then I end up putting my minute clips up on YouTube, but then people are like, where's the full song. So I, so it's funny. So I'm trying to do more full covers, but yeah, for now it's mostly Instagram and I kind of don't use my Facebook much anymore. Um, so it's, it's usually Instagram, but yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting how social media works. I mean, I, it, I think being involved in all levels of social media are important. Facebook, there might be some older people that are using Facebook because it's been around a longer time. Exactly. There's different age bracket for Instagram. There's different age bracket for Twitter. And now of course, TikTok and it yeah. 
changes and grows. There are so many, it's like overwhelming. And I'm like, and then a couple of people were like, do you have a TikTok? And I'm like, no. And then I tried, I made one and then I deleted it because it was just like too overwhelming because it's like between all the social platforms, it's like, you know, and I have to be careful with social media too and just my phone because I'll spend a lot of time on my phone and, and get distracted. And it's like, so I'm trying to keep it to a minimum so I can just, you know, spend time actually drumming. But social media is, it's a blessing and a curse in a lot of ways. It's like a distraction, but it's also how you reach so many people. So well, it, it, it sure is. And check this out here. This is Victoria. Victoria is a phenomenal female drummer and a phenomenal teacher in, in awesome. Ukraine. And oh, I got to check out her drumming. That's check out cool. her drumming on there too. Go out there and check it out. She is a phenomenal player and she's got a band that she has out uh, in the Ukraine that uh, is just, you know, playing everywhere. And, she, and I, I, so cool. I have lessons once a week with uh, Maxim Dioman, who's a wonderful drum teacher in the Ukraine. And she joins us for these lessons. And she's oh, just so cool. And, you know, here's a, a perfect example of another, here's another great female player. Pushing hard, you know, getting females to, to be have more accessibility and more, you know, you know, you know, acceptance in this crazy field. But it's happening. So thank you, Victoria, for joining us. That's so cool. I've I I need to yeah. And that group you were telling me about too, with all those female drummers, I, I need to join that and check it out because you know what better way to find a bunch of new female drummers? That's so cool. Well, I think the other part of it too is that you know you are you're becoming one of the leaders in, in, in as a female in the drumming industry, and, and as people go by and check out what you're doing and they follow you, there's a certain responsibility that comes with that, that opens the door for other female you know drummers to accept the fact that it can be done. Totally, and I've been kind of brainstorming on on I don't know how I would go about doing it, or if it would be a podcast thing or whatever, but I've wanted to start something where you know it's more of like a maybe interviewing different females and maybe not keeping it exclusive to drummers, but just interviewing females in the industry and kind of creating a platform, kind of like you, you were saying she created that Facebook group, but having somewhere where, you know, I could interview different females in particular and kind of talk about, and, and I don't know, put a voice to, to how important it is to have females in the industry as well. So I'm trying to, I'm in the midst of figuring out kind of how to do that, but I haven't figured it out yet. But And do you, and, and you said you play some guitar, do you still play some guitar? I do, yeah. I, I play guitar, not as much because I I have just been so into just keeping it my focus on drums. But yeah, I do. I still play a little bit of guitar, and if I do covers or whatever, and I'm going to start writing. I think a little bit, like maybe little minute pieces for Instagram, and just kind of doing that too. And what about singing? Do you do some singing? I can, and I but I don't. <laughs> I don't know why I don't. I. I definitely could. I just don't. Um, I just don't. But I, I do in my car. <laughs> but I don't like by myself. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. You know, well, I, you know, there's a, a student here that I have, Kevin uh, Gaffney, who's a, a, a wonderful player here in the New York area. And he's taking some lessons with me. And he said uh, he noticed that you play guitar and sing. And, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know, when you pick it up, you, you've accomplished enough to play. So how did this all come about with guitar and singing and drums? You know, you really have a very musical background so i don't really like i said i kind of started playing guitar and then after playing guitar for a while i got into drumming and then when you play guitar you can play bass like a guitar player plays bass with root notes and and stuff so i kind of after doing all of those three things i i still have a love for guitar and so i would just kind of do both and then listening to music you know like i said with green day growing up i'd always learn their songs on guitar and drums and then i started to once i got my own daw and my own recording set up i would you know just kind of recreate different songs and stuff so it just kind of i don't know i just kind of naturally turned into whatever this is cuz i still love doing all of them so i figured it's kind of fun to be able to kind of create and recreate songs and stuff. So, fantastic, fantastic, Brittany. I, I, you're so interesting in what you have, what you have built, and what you're doing. And of course, even with your social media. So, your Facebook is Brittany Nicole Bowman, mm -hmm. and that's also your Instagram, Brittany Nicole. Instagram Bowman. and my YouTube, and YouTube also. Your, your your full name, Brittany Nicole Bowman. Well, that's I want everyone to kind of, but it's Brittdrums.com, which is your website, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I want That's people to go by there too and and check out what you're doing. In closing, Brittany, what would you say to this these these young drummers and not even necessarily female drummers? What would you say to these young drummers that are starting to really kind of 
you know, step into this world of drumming and uh, they're looking for some advice, what kind of guidance would you give them? I would definitely just stick stick with it. If it's what you love and you're passionate about it, like don't get discouraged at little road bumps you might have along the way. Just be consistent with it. And, you know, there's always good days and bad days and days you get frustrated that you're not, you know, at a certain level or whatever, but just keep with it. And if you're passionate about it, it, it all pays off in the end. So. Boy, well, you absolutely are passionate about what you're doing and you have an incredible setup there with the drums that you have, the Mapex drums that you have in the studio that you have. And even during this pandemic, you still seem to be driven and motivated to push yourself forward and still grow. I'm trying. I'm trying my best during this whole, it's a weird time, but you know, it's like, what else, you know, just got to keep with it and however you can. So then uh, thank you for having me and thank you to Mapex and everything because it's such a great company and I'm so excited to be a part of it. Well, thanks so much. This will go on to their, this is on their Facebook page live. It'll also go eventually into their YouTube channel. So you'll have this to share and uh, and share some of this with your social media as Mapex will push this for sure. Thank you so much. You know, my God, Brittany, you are a very special person. Thank you so much. Stay well, stay safe. And I look forward to yeah. when I get out to LA to meet you in person. Yes, you too. Stay warm and crazy cold New York. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so, so much. Thanks.